Today I was invited into a new server known as Mine Piece, where I managed to conquer the first three islands in the game. Each island had its own quests and challenges. I had to do everything from killing pirates, clowns, bosses, mini bosses, and don't even get me started on the cooking arc. I had to become a chef. Dude, no way, you've gotta be kidding me. You're telling me I have to feed all these people? I have to catch some kind of legendary lobster, what do you mean? Listen, I don't know what I was expecting in this video, but it wasn't to become a chef. What's so amazing about this 100 days is that this is entirely not modded. This is all done on a 1.20.1 server. My piece has truly blew me away with the sheer quality of a server that's not even modded. I highly recommend you go try it if you have Minecraft. It requires no mods. Just simply play 1.20.1 and you can just log straight into Mine Piece. However, this journey is a very long one. So how about we just go ahead and get started? So when I first joined, I spawned into Fusha. It was there I received a question of what faction I would like to join. I could have chose to be a pirate, a marine, or join the Revolutionary Army. This was a tough choice because all of them sounded pretty appealing. If I was to become a pirate, I would have more strength and defense, and I get a sales bonus on certain items. As a marine, instead of defense, I get strength and health, which I think is actually a little bit better in most cases. And finally, as a Revolutionary Army member, I get defense and power power to my fruit. Now, honestly, all these sound pretty good, but I decided to go for the Revolutionary Army because I thought that would just be something new that most people don't do. And I definitely don't regret my choice because I'm starting off a little bit more defensive than most people, and that fruit power is gonna pay off in the long run. Once I selected my faction, I could see that I already had a bunch of items in my inventory. So I went ahead and equipped my armor, and I also had a shield, a sword, and the sword was just okay. But the spawn was a really cool area. I of course was wearing my shank skin because I thought that would be appropriate for the time. I also noticed in my inventory, I happened to have two vote keys. Now I didn't actually vote for these keys. These two vote keys, I actually used in a crate and managed to get two cow spawners, which I thought was pretty cool. Unfortunately, in the long run, these cow spawners didn't really do a whole lot for me because you can find cows right there in Fusha. But I mean, it's the thought that counts, right? The first thing that caught my eye was a sign that says zone adventure. So I followed the yellow arrow, which was telling me to kill five bandits, because this was actually my first quest. Once I got down the hill, I actually noticed that there was a woman with a question mark, and she basically just had all the quests and taught you how to sell and buy items. I also noticed that there was two different crates, and these different crates could actually be used to get special items. Finally, there was a statue of the man I was going to have to kill by the end of this. However, I actually didn't know this at the time. At the time, I just thought it was simply a statue. I tried right-clicking it, and nothing happened. I looked at the dozens of pirates down the hill. Technically, they're bandits, but I'm gonna call them pirates. They look like pirates, bro. Look at their out. Okay, to be fair, there's some pretty cool pirates out there. But listen, I just started going crazy on these guys. I started killing them left and right, and before long, I actually completed my quest. Once I completed the quest, I actually noticed that I had quite a bit of these shards, and I realized that I could go open up one of the crates now. I was pretty excited, so I made my way over to the crate, and once I had actually opened the crate, I immediately got a decently rare item. It was a Guma. This is actually going to be the guy that I have to fight at the statue, but I wouldn't know that until way later. However, having this pet was pretty interesting. I didn't even know pets were in the game until this exact moment. I actually realized there's an entire pet menu, so I can have passive effects from these pets that are constantly making me money every hour, and giving me small little buffs like higher drop rate more sales pretty cool stuff and you could also level up these pets finally i had a new mission i need to go chop down 32 wheat pretty basic but i had to go find out where exactly this was going to be i followed the arrow all the way down the path until i finally reached where all the wheat was some of it had already been destroyed but there was still plenty to go around i put out my hoe and i just started going bro i demolished the wheat in seconds it stood no chance against me once i was done i felt proud i went third person looked myself in the eyes and then I continued down the path. The arrow was actually a pretty nice addition that taught me exactly where I needed to go. But before I could reach my next destination, I looked to my left and noticed that there was actually a town. This town had some kind of bar, which looked pretty interesting, and there was a couple different stores. I entered the bar thinking it might be pretty interesting, but it kind of made me uncomfortable. Everybody was staring at me. I wasn't exactly sure why, so I very slowly left and never came back. I was far too scared to check the town anymore at that point, so I just simply followed the arrow and went back to spawn. The mission actually said to create an island, but for some reason it took me over to Zoro, so, you know, I just did what anybody would do, and I right-clicked Zoro. After that, I clicked on your island, and it actually started my island. It created me, my own personal island. However, I couldn't just create an island, I had to create a name. And after a few failed attempts, I tried a few different names until I finally just had the revolution with a dash between it. After this, I spawned in on an island that seemed to be a shipwrecked, and a cutscene began to play explaining to me exactly what I needed to do 
to further develop my island. These cutscenes are pretty cool, especially when this is not modded in any sort of way. Really, all this part was was just teaching me a bunch of stuff like the tutorial. I had to break some logs, break some cobblestone, and I realized just how much I hate these stupid cobblestone generators because it kept burning the cobblestone. Finally, I was able to go back to spawn, open the shop menu, and sell my hay bales that I had collected. My next quest was just to simply open up my island menu, which gave me something called a silver berry. I opened the chest and tried to place the berry inside, and it apparently added something called 300 value to my island. I'm not sure if it expands my island or what, but yes, I actually added some more value to my island. I didn't really focus too much on my island in this playthrough because I was more about the adventure aspect. I wanted to see what this game could truly offer in the terms of exploration. When I finally checked my rewards menu, I had a ton pending. It gave me a bunch of free money, and also it gave me some diamond blocks, which I thought was awesome at the time. Although diamonds are pretty useless in this, actually. But let me have my little happy moment, you know? But on my screen, out of nowhere, a boss event had started. Apparently it was in Orange Town, but I hadn't been to Orange Town yet, so I couldn't exactly go check out this boss. But by completing the quest, I got a rowboat. This rowboat was going to be my ticket to getting to other islands. However, just when I thought all the Fusha missions were going to be done, I was very, very wrong. I had barely finished the tutorial. But this is where the adventure would truly begin. I checked my quest and there was a bunch of stuff like breaking logs, killing bandits. I had to get to work. The first thing I did was go get my armor and tools that I had left behind. And I did what any reasonable man would do in this situation. I went fishing. Now, if you didn't know, I actually have a really bad habit when it comes to video games. And that one habit is I like to fish in video games. Why? I don't know. Pokemon Mall, I literally just sold Magikarp on the market all the time and earned millions from it. In Stardew Valley, I chose a fishing island and had maxed out my fishing stat in a matter of days. It's all I did. I just wanted to collect all the cool fishes in the game. There's also a bunch of other examples, but the idea is I'm a man that likes to max out my fishing stat in games because I know it can be really useful. And it's something that a lot of people often overlook. However, I'm gonna let you guys know now, while the fishing this time was pretty easy, this was just foreshadowing for something I was gonna have to do in the future that would really put my fishing skills to the test. To my surprise, there was a certain fish I didn't expect to lure in. It was a standard Minecraft fishes until suddenly I had gotten a very special fish. While also completing my quest, I went to check and apparently had something called a Neon Tatra. I was very interested in what this exactly was supposed to be, but I was also really proud. I missed a special fish. And to my credit, I never got another fish like that on my island for the rest of the video. So that's pretty cool. However, I was getting kind of bored and I wanted to go test out my PVP skills on some of these bandits slash pirates again. So I start just getting back to work and trying to build up the bandit whiskey that I needed to do a quest. And I also need to kill a certain amount of bandits to complete a quest. So there I went grinding. It took me about 20 minutes to really get everything I needed, except for the whiskey. The whiskey seemed to actually have a bit of a challenge. And that's where I was introduced to the grindy aspect of this server. Not that it's bad, this is where it's actually kind of fun, and that's what makes things harder and more rare to get. You see, these guys can actually drop multiple different materials, and they have certain drop rates. Bandit Whiskey would be the first thing that I would find, but there would later be more items that would drop. Before finally I got my first Bandit Armor Fragment. If you got all enough fragments, you could actually create a set of armor that would make you stronger. It goes beyond just normal Minecraft armor. It gives you more health and more defense. This was something I'd absolutely need for the road ahead, and I had to start working on trying to get this if I wanted to have a chance against the boss of this island. Since I had killed enough pirates, I saw a mission that actually asked me to kill some cows. This is something I didn't quite understand, and while I would need to kill more bandits later and try to get more items to be able to get the armor, uh, I was just going to take a little break, go do something else. Mainly, I just wanted to finish up my quest. So, I need to figure out where these cows were. So, as I start to explore, I found this cave, and I thought this cave surely was going to have some crazy stuff. And, I mean, it did have a lot of ores, like there was some iron, gold some diamonds, but for the most part, they're pretty useless and they're not that valuable. Other than that, the cave was basically just there to be there, but it did look pretty cool. There was also this treasure chest that I thought I could open and I just couldn't open it. I think it's just there for decoration. I thought it was really cool. I was like, oh man, am I about to have to have a boss fight down here? Am I about to click this chest and then something's just gonna spawn? No, no, it's just there. There's just a bunch of gold there and I'm not taking it because reasons. It would not let me. Anyway, I wanted to actually see what my rowboat could do. Since I need to explore anyways, I spawned my ship for the first time. And I noticed it was actually a pretty cool looking ship. Look at that. I mean, it's it's not a normal Minecraft boat. There's actually a little bit of a sail. And your ships can get better and better in this game. I could see an island off in the distance. And my curiosity was getting the better of me. Before I said so, though, it said I could rename my ship. So I renamed it to Bob. Bob Nader. 
because like baconator from wendy's you get like a bob ba bobnator anyways so i set sail and i didn't set sail very long either because the island was right there most of the islands are very far but this one was a very tiny island that just happened to be very close to fuchsia there's apparently something called a treasure chest here and pvp is enabled in these areas which kind of just terrified me to be honest but these chests actually have really rare things if you're careful and get them at the right times however i realized i'm not messing with all that i'm just not people are gonna be here they're gonna be like man i gotta get me a phoenix fruit oh i need this legendary fruit so i can sell it nah man i'm good i think i'm just gonna stick to the main quest try and get stronger and then maybe eventually in maybe two to three hundred days i can try and come back here and do these sorts of things i continued to explore the island and i found some kind of deserted beach uh i thought it would have some kind of purpose no no, it's just a beach. It's, it's, it literally is just a beach. I mean, what more do you want from me? It, it's a beach. But finally, after a lot of searching, I did manage to find the cow farm. It was on one of the sides of the island. So I only need to kill eight cows, and I just started going in there and slaughtering all the cows. And finally, I completed that quest. I was getting ever closer to defeating Higuma. As I was searching, I found the dock area where I found literally Shanks. Shanks is literally in this. So I stood by him for just a minute, kind of admired that. I was like, oh yeah, look, look, I'm sitting beside me. Uh, that was basically it. Then I just went back to killing some more bandits and pirates for a while, just because I wanted to see if I could get that armor that I wanted. I wanted to have better armor, and I still needed to try and get the rest of the whiskey that I needed to complete the quest. I still had a long way to go, and I didn't even realize. In the midst of all my grinding, I started to wonder where Haguma was. You see, I found all the bandits all across the island, but I had yet to see the boss, and there was no area where the boss could spawn. I checked the caves thinking, clearly this must be the, where the boss would spawn. I mean, it's a special area. I was thinking, maybe he spawns near the treasure chest after a certain time period. However, after a while, I didn't notice anything happening. So I asked in the chat, where's Aguma? And this man, Potato Baba, I don't know, Potato Baba, that's what I'm going to call him. Potato Baba over here with an emperor rank. He's like, Fusion Timmy, read. Don't be this guy, okay? Because actually... This is a very common problem that most people don't even understand. There's nothing that tells you how to fight Haguma. I only learned because of somebody else. Every time you play this server, everybody's always asking in the chat, how do you fight the bosses? Once you know how to fight the bosses once, it's the same thing for every island. Most people don't know you're supposed to right click the statue. And if you try clicking the statue too early, it's literally impossible to fight anything because you're not able to open up the menu. You have to do a certain amount of quests before you can even open up the statue. However, since I didn't know this at the time, I was left pretty clueless. I was like, well, geez, man, thanks. Thanks for the help. All you have to do is say, hey, it, you just do it like this. I still had no idea where Haguma was after this. I thought, of course, maybe the chat would help me. Not this time. So I tried to do a bit more exploring, and I just looked all around the island. I did everything I could, and I just couldn't seem to find Haguma. So I was tired of, like, bothering with it, and I figured, why not just try and get the armor first? Even if I do figure out where the boss is, I can't fight him in my current state anyways. I might as well get stronger. I ended up getting another pet from the chest, which I thought was pretty cool. Then, since my starter armor broke, I went ahead and made some half diamond, half iron armor, and I just kind of rolled with that for a while, and I thought, surely that must be pretty good, right? No, it's pretty horrible, actually, because the in-game armor that you can craft with the fragments is just that good. But it's okay. It was still better than having nothing, so it worked for the time being. But even though this wasn't a quest, there was something I still needed to do, and that was make bandit armor. This is where it would get more grindy than ever. Slowly but surely i began to get more fragments i began to get more whiskey bottles and i actually figured out i had a lot of whiskey bottles just sitting in my chest at my island and i had no idea for the longest time so that was actually pretty easy i had finally had enough whiskey bottles and the only quest left was just to kill the boss but as i said i needed to get bandit armor before i stood a chance finally i had enough to get a chest plate so that's exactly what i did i went to the merchant and i made a bandit chest plate the first piece of the armor had been created and this brought me up from 20 health to 24 health. And it also gave me more defense and protection. This was the weakest armor set in the server when it comes to fragment pieces, but it's still better than diamond armor or even netherite. I still had two pieces left, so I went ahead and actually made me a helmet as well. And now I had half the armor set. I looked pretty dorky, but it's fine. It's all about the stats, you know what I mean? It's all about that grind. You guys will look pretty silly too when you join. But it's okay, because you get the strength. I can't actually remember who taught me how to defeat Haguma, but I ended up eventually learning from somebody that you were able to do it by right-clicking the statue. Now, earlier it didn't work for me, but this time it did. Once I realized this, I knew what I needed to. It was very stupid of me. But instead of getting the last two armor pieces, 
I went into the Huguma boss battle. And to be honest with you, I don't remember doing this. I usually go in over prepared. It teleported me to this random cave area. And for a moment, everything was silent until finally he spawned. There he was. While he was slow, he did a lot of damage. But luckily, he was pretty light work for me. I just started hitting him as much as I could, closing the distance, but also trying to dodge his attacks every time he would strike. It was a little hard to dodge in a way, but what really made this fight hard was when he spawned all of his henchmen. All of these bandits just started getting on my face. But luckily, I kept my distance and just tried to slowly take them out. I quickly realized though, trying to take out all these bandits isn't the smartest way to go about things. So I tried to go straight for Hugo. And then I had a genius strategy. What if I led them to the water? What if I slow them down? No matter who they are, if they go into the water, they become slow. So I distracted them, taking a couple to the water, and then I jumped out of the water, and finally I took down Haguma. There, I saw a chest, I right-clicked it, and it gave me a berry, some scraps, and a couple skulls. I don't really know what the skulls mean. I never figured it out, but I'm guessing it's probably like a pirate ranking system or something. Either way, I got stronger, okay? I had finally completed all of the quest for Fusha Island. And now, my current quest was to upgrade to recruit rank. So I immediately did that, of course. I'm not a slave. I think I'm trying to be slave rank. You're crazy. This would cost me 100,000, but it would allow me to go to Orange Town. It gave me a recruit kit if I ever needed. And a little bit of extra stats. I went from 24 health to 33. But after this, I wasn't done. Like I said, I'm usually a completionist type of person. So I went around killing bandits until I finally had enough armor pieces to make the full bandit armor set. Finally. Finally, I had the entire bandit armor set. I felt so satisfied. I returned back to my island, I put my berries in, and I kind of sorted out my inventory just a little bit. After that, I went to the port, thinking that I would have to put the ship there for some reason. I don't know why I assumed this, but for some reason I went all the way to the port, put my boat down, and then I left to try and go to Orange Town. This was a very cinematic thing to do, so I'll cut me some slack. I went all the way to Orange Town, and as I got onto the island, I immediately noticed some new enemies. They were clowns. There was also a lot of potatoes and rabbits everywhere. I could already tell the quests were going to be insane. So I immediately did what anyone would do. I just started getting all of the potatoes. There was also a mini boss that's kind of chilling in the area, but I didn't seem to acknowledge it. I was too focused on the potatoes. I think it's rather a good thing I didn't because he probably would have killed me. Since I was scared of the new island and I thought that PvP might be enabled for some reason, I didn't bring my actual bandit armor. I just simply used my diamond and iron armor just to check out the island. But I quickly learned it's safe and that's when I would go back and gain my armor. But this is when I learned something that would be rather annoying throughout my playthrough and made things a lot more difficult for me. You see, you can't just warp back to Orange Town. You can warp to spawn, you can warp to your island, you can warp across places in Fusha, but you cannot warp back to Orange Town. Not unless you pay for it. And where I needed all this money for all my quest and to get stronger, I was not about to do all that. So instead, every time I wanted to go back to Orange Town, I would have to sail all the way over there every single time. Orange Town was a lot different than Fusha. This is where the game truly starts to let you have a little bit more freedom. The grind here was significantly more than the grind I had to experience at Fusha. Once I complete the quest, I need to open up an orange crate. Same system as Fusha, there were some crates here that could give you pets and random items, especially weapons, and these weapons would have special multipliers that did more damage on this particular island. So I really need to get this item if I want to grind faster. They did almost two to three times more damage than your average item. And to my surprise, when I first opened the chest, I got Baggy's Knives as my very first item. And this was going to make my grind a lot more simple. Instead of having to hit each enemy four to five times, I would now only have to hit them about two times and then they would die. Baggy's knife actually had some more damage, magic find, and critical chance. And it did 80% more damage to Pirates from Orange Town, which is huge. After that though, I was all out of my oranges and I went right back to grinding. What really confused me is there was an arrow that was pointing to a certain location where nothing was. I was like, uh, I'm supposed to fight a mini boss here, right? Where's the mini boss? So I was looking all around like, uh, where are you? It could, it could it be glitched and nothing happened. So I tried to stick in the general area until finally something did happen. A mini boss spawned, just like the one I had seen earlier. But this time I actually noticed. But uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was extremely easy for me because of the baggies knife. It only took me about four or five hits. And after I killed him, I had something very special. I guess something known as Buggy's Ball, which is just items that you can use for quests. They're not really all that useful. They're just something you need for quests. But 
I had a fruit. A random common devil fruit. Now, obviously, it's not that rare, but it's a fruit. My very first... Either way, I was excited, and I just tried to take a nice little... Nice little bite out of that. Here it is. My devil fruit. And to my surprise, I got something known as a slide slide fruit. Now, a slide slide's pretty bad in terms of the fruits in this game. However... And it does give me a giant speed boost, which is really useful for grinding. So it's actually not too bad in the early game. Every time I right click this fruit, it makes me become faster. So I could kill enemies and then run around to other enemies faster, making my grind quicker. Not to mention this made my traversal even better. I could get around so much faster. This actually used up a bar at the bottom that was beside my health bar. It was my fruit energy bar. Me being in the Revolutionary Army actually gave me a bit more fruit power, and that made things a bit more interesting. But after getting this, I just had to go back to grinding. And there was a buggy statue right in the middle of town. The buggy statue was basically calling my name, but I knew if this was going to be anything like the last boss, it was definitely going to be a challenge. But I had a feeling buggy was probably going to be a lot more of a challenge than the previous boss. The reason I say that is because that was basically an easy tutorial island boss. Even that one was a bit more challenging and impressive than I imagined. But buggy was going to be a true challenge. I would later understand that I was right. Finally, I killed enough to where it actually completed the quest. But let's be real. Just because you completed the quest doesn't mean that you're going to have enough to get your armor fragments or to be able to actually defeat the boss. So I still need to grind a lot more even after I finish the quest. There was a lot of crazy missions I needed to complete on this island. Also, I've been calling these guys clowns, but they're actually sailors. We're not going to talk about it, bro. I'm calling them clowns. You can call them sailors. I don't care. I managed to get a couple more pets over the course of my time here. And some of the quests involved like me getting some apples, killing rabbits, getting some beetroots. It was going to be a lot more of a chore. The quest size had actually doubled. There was more quest, and a lot of them had to do with a lot of minor tasks, which was something I wasn't exactly looking forward to. And normally, if I wasn't making a video, I would have no problem doing these. I'm someone that can take these grindy games, and I see it as fun. I will do these grindy things just to get that reward, and I will not complain at all. However, when you're on a video like this, it can be a bit of a pain. I was on a time limit. I wanted to try and do as much for this video as I absolutely could within 100 days. So I had no time to relax. I was on the grind. My biggest thing I wanted to do, though, was to be able to kill Buggy. So I did what anyone would do. I kept killing all these sailors and opening boxes. One of my quests was actually to open up 15 boxes anyway, so I needed to do it. Since I needed to kill a certain amount of rabbits, I went exploring the island until I eventually found rabbits. And I hate to say it, I had to kill a bunch of these things. I had to kill, like... 70 rabbits or something it was something crazy and i did it <laughs> don't hate me all right I, I had to do what i had to do on top of that i saw some more mini bosses and every time i saw them i'd always kill them because they have a higher drop rate they're highly likely to drop me at least a buggy ball or a fragment of clothes it was just totally worth it to kill them why wouldn't i, I now had zoro and luffy as some of my pets i thought that was pretty cool they're really common but I thought it was cool that I got them. Finally, I had 12 armor fragments. With those fragments, I got the clown chest plate. But instead of immediately trying to get another piece of armor, I, for some reason, went to spawn and <laughs> decided to look at the auction house. Why? I can't remember, to be completely honest. I think I was wanting a certain weapon. And that's why I got something called a Dalton sword. I won the auction for it and immediately tried to pick it up and just see what it could do. The reason I got it is because it said it did a lot of damage. I was like, I was thinking, oh yes, 20 damage. That's a lot more than four damage. Now I can one shot these guys. I'll be able to kill the boss. I thought I found the cheat code to get around the game system. However, I had failed in noticing one thing because I was very dumb back when I first started. You see, Dawn Sword, while it has more strength, it doesn't do as much damage to the island's pirates. You see, Buggy's knife might be weaker, but it does 80% more damage to pirates on Orange Island, where Dawn's sword does not. So in comparison, Buggy's knife does a lot more, and I just wasted my money on a useless sword, at least for the time being. Eventually, it'll be useful, but not for a few islands from now, and that won't even be in this video. A very simple mistake, but one that would be costly. However, after a lot of grinding, I managed to also get the entire clown armor set. It actually wasn't too bad. I just listened to music, ran around using my fruit, and killing things non-stop for as long as I could. I completed my quest, and I managed to get a full set of armor. And now it was time to kill Buggy. When I spawned in, I spawned into a literal circus tent. And I thought, okay, this is kind of weird. It's empty again. And then boom. And then he just immediately started swinging. 
he wasted no time. Luckily, with his knife though, I shredded him to below half his health in a mere couple of seconds. But there was one problem. Even with the clown armor, there was too many of them. My health was being shredded in seconds. Just as quick as I had gotten Bucky's health down, he had already gotten mine down because of his henchmen. Not to mention if he hits me a single time, it does way too much damage. I was very disappointed. I had all the clown armor. I had the weapon. And yet, I still lost. I was confused. How did I even lose this? I did everything right. But that's when I realized. It's simply a challenging boss fight. I hate that I wasted resources trying to do this fight, but I was not going to give up there. I knew it was possible to win. I was close. I just needed to be more aggressive. I can't let him kill me before I kill him. But before I could even fight Buggy, there's a boss that spawns in the middle of Orange Town. This was the boss that was mentioned earlier. And while I did almost no damage to it and nearly died in just a couple of seconds, I did at least get to see what the boss looked like before immediately running for my life because there were so many fruits being used. I was already slowed and I was scared. I was scared for my life. I had seven health left. And all these guys are just jumping this boss. And look at him, he's just tanking them. It's insane. They managed to kill him and I just thought it was really cool. Just for a moment. It's like the whole server came together just to try fighting this boss. I nearly died. I really felt really weak in comparison to all these guys, and I realized just how much I wanted to become stronger. Not just for the video, but because I genuinely enjoyed the experience. Since I had 20,000 oranges, I decided, you know what? Screw it. How about I just start rolling? I was hoping I'd get the fragmentation fruit, but I didn't. However, I did get Morg's whip, and I thought, ah, oh, maybe this is better than Baggy's knife, because it's actually just a little bit better, right? Like, look at that. It, it actually does a little bit of damage. But once again, I was wrong. If you look at the stats, one does 80%, one does 50%. The whip is not nearly as good as the knife. And that's just a fact when it comes to the Orange Town Pirates. So I pretty much already had the strongest weapon. I just tested it anyways, and yes, of course, Baggy's knife was better. So in reality, I didn't really get a whole lot, although I did get Baggy as a pet. And he became basically my pet for the entire rest of the video. I put all of my candies onto him to make him higher level, and I think it did pay off. It allowed me to do more damage to people on Orange Island, as well as I got more resistance. I wanted to have a rematch, so of course, I went straight to Baggy after that. Before I could fight the boss again, even though I wanted to get my revenge, I decided maybe it'd be best if I did my other quest first. I had been trying to farm trees for a while trying to get apples, and it felt near impossible. If you play, you'll know what I mean. However, I asked in the chat, and this very friendly guy was like, hey man, Try using these certain shears. These shears were really expensive, but I won the auction for 500,000 gold. Absolutely insane. I got these really rare shears I was able to use, and these shears did help me chop the leaves faster, and it did make me have a higher chance of getting apples. It still took me a long time. It was forever before I finally saw an apple. But after about an hour of this, I finally had enough apples to complete the quest. It sounds really silly, and that's because it is, and I do think this was probably... One of the annoying quests that probably should have been just chopped out by the developers, or at least made a little bit easier. Either way, uh, this is the best method to do it. If you want a genuine way to just absolutely get these apples quicker than, like, five years, make sure you get these shears. They're not that hard to get, people sell them, and they're gonna have a lot of use in the late game. It was truly a pain. I even used dark oak wood, because I heard online that it has a slightly higher chance of giving you apples, and that actually might be true. Either way, after completing this, I got a gem that... I got a gem that could supposedly give me more stats in certain areas, but it just broke, unfortunately. I had to create rabbit stews, and then I had to create some beetroot stews, and this sounds really simple once again, but you have to get all the items, and you can't just go get them. You have to either get them from the islands, which is the easy part, or you have to go into the shop and buy certain items. Some things you just flat out can't find or receive, you just have to be lucky enough to get them. However, I did manage to get everything I needed, and I created all the soups that I needed. <sighs> After a lot of exhaustion, I was more than ready to try and take out Buggy. I gotta be entirely honest, uh, as I'm editing this, I don't know where the footage went where I killed Buggy. <laughs> Just it, it's non-existent, I don't know where it went. But exactly, it pretty much went the exact same way as you'd expect. I just had to kill Buggy twice, and I did manage to do it. I did die a couple times, but you would either win or lose. It was a 50-50 chance, so if you do play it, expect to lose sometimes, it's okay. My advice is to try and get up close to Buggy and do as much damage as you can, and just try and ignore everything else. The quicker you kill him, the quicker you win, and the less quick that he can kill you. Just be the first to kill, basically. Don't let him kill you, if you can. 
After this, I was finally ready to move on to the next island, and what would await me there would be my final challenge of the video. Something I was not at all prepared to take on. I got in my ship, went to the port, and this time I actually did need to go from the port. It was the easiest way to get where I needed to go. After a lot of sailing, I could finally see something to my left. An island. Not really an island, more of a ship. Once I got off, I could immediately see a familiar face. It was Sanji. When I checked him, he actually had even more quests and then the last island. I was like, okay, these quests are getting crazy. There was also some crates and a statue that looks a lot like Gyarados from Pokemon, but it's supposed to be the sea monster, which is our very final boss of this video. You have no idea the grinding I had to go through in this island. This was the worst island of all. When I checked the quest, it actually had a couple cool items, like there was some different swords that you could use. I noticed one thing far later throughout this video that I didn't really catch on to at first. All of the stat buffs that you get from these weapons are for the next island, not this island. This island has no pirates. This is not a bandit beater island. This is something else. And I was quickly starting to realize this fact. I went inside and immediately saw some kind of chef. And I was like, okay, what's what, what's going on here? You, know, you could catch fish. I was like, okay. I mean, I know I can catch fish. But I saw that there was a kitchen, stove. It said restaurant, a little bit hungry. I'm a little confused. And I swear I just saw somebody despawn. I'm seeing food above their heads. And I'm realizing this is literally a kitchen minigame. It took me a minute to really understand. But once I started to see what was happening, I could already tell. This is like a mobile game. I go inside the kitchen, and I start right-clicking everything, and I see all that there's an assembly. The assembly had different types of dishes you could make, and I was like, okay, so what do I need for these dishes? You need very specific fishes, and these fishes can only be caught at Baratai. You can only find them on this exact area. And they all have different rarities as well, so there's like a lionfish, a fighting fish, a red lobster, an octopus, and a butterfly fish, and they each take different ingredients. Some of them you can't even receive until late game, so don't even think about trying to do the butterfly fish. It was literally impossible for me, and good luck trying to do it yourself. The others, though, they're all entirely possible. It just can take money and a lot of time. The hardest part is honestly getting the stuff for the fishes, not the fish. The fish themselves are really easy to find. It just takes, you know, about an hour or two of fishing. Once I realized what this place was supposed to be about, I was very confused, and I was like, no. This, this can't be it. There's no way that this can just be the entire island, right? So I go around and I'm looking, trying to see maybe there's something I can fight. Nothing. I check the quest, and the quests are a lot similar to Orange Island in the sense that there's little random things for me to do. But most of them had to do with me serving customers. I had to become a chef. This is what I had been training for my entire life. And I did what any man in my situation would do. I went to the sea, and I began fishing. Of course, I had to fish for a long time. Now, this first time I fished, it actually wasn't that long. I wanted to test and see what this was all about, so once I fished up a couple of things, I just went down to the kitchen, I went to the stove, and I started cooking. And to my surprise, they actually turned into cooked fish. It's really cool because it's not even modded, and they have these special textures. I don't know how they do it. But they did it. After this, I started making a couple dishes, and I had to kind of go to the shop to try and buy some of the items that I would need for these dishes, which is honestly the hardest part. Some take potatoes, some take carrots, some will take water bottles, rose bushes, you name it. And you need a bunch of them for the fish. But once you do this, you can make dishes. Once I made a couple dishes, I went to the kitchen, and I realized there's only two people at a time, and each of them only have certain dishes at a time. If you don't have these dishes, you have to wait for them to despawn and respawn every time. So I patiently just walked around the kitchen, waiting for them to switch to something I did have. This took a lot longer than it should have. However, finally my time did come, and I gave them their dishes. And I was more curious. I was like, okay, so if this is really slow if I just have a dish or two. I need to have more dish types. So I went in there to see what the other ingredients would take. What other dishes would I need to make? What ingredients would I need? And I saw most of them were pretty simple. They're not all that bad. And I really wanted to make some of the rare ones because I had a feeling they would give me more shards. The hardest thing on this island is getting shards for either the crates or to be able to fight the sea monster. They are stupidly hard to get on this island, but it is possible. This is where the game kind of slows to a crawl, and you just really need to go fish and cook a lot. Not only that, but there's a lot of random other quests that you need to complete, like trying to go to your island and kill squids, which means you need a squid spawner. 
a lot of random things you would never expect. However, I persevered. I made dish after dish, and finally, I had enough. It was time to lock in and become the fisherman I was always meant to become. I went to the crates and I realized there was a special fishing rod on this island. I had the cook's fishing rod. This gave me a much higher chance to pull something more rare, especially fishes that were on this island, as well as it had a faster reeling time. So I was getting fishes a lot faster this way. So for the next couple of hours, I simply sat there and fished. And when I say I fished, I fished harder than I ever have before. And finally, as you can see, my inventory was filled with over a stack of octopuses, 20 legendary lobsters, 64 lionfishes. I mean, I had a ton. Fighting fishes, butterfly fishes. I knew then, at that point, I should have more than enough fishes to be able to make enough dishes to be able to get a lot of money. That's all I needed. I had more than enough to fight the sea serpent already, however I was scared. I had a feeling I would need something else, and this is where I made a small mistake. You see, I went into the kitchen and started crafting all these different dishes and, you know, serving the customers. However, when I got my points, I kept spinning them on the crate thinking, ah yes, I need this weapon. This weapon is going to help me. This weapon's going to help me defeat the sea monster. Wrong. Like I said, I eventually learned all those weapons are for the next island. The sea monster, you're supposed to fight with stuff that you got from Orange Island. It's basically a filler arc. So once I realized this fact, I stopped spending all my money on these crates. I mean, sure, it's going to be useful in the future, but I really just want to kill the sea serpent for this video. So finally, I got ready to fight the sea serpent. I equipped my Dalton sword because I thought it would probably do a lot more damage than Buggy's knife because that is actually a special circumstance where this has more strength. Also, I had all my seed horns, I had my money, I was ready to go. So I entered inside of the Sea Serpent battle thinking this was going to be a challenge. And right I was. But as you can see, I brought a bow and arrow, thinking this would actually do something. Because somebody told me in the chat that that was a really smart idea. I tried it and it did nothing. It was like it just bounced off. It ate it and immediately started slamming me with attacks. But luckily, I used plan B. And this plan was the plan that saved me. You see, I had a shield that I got from a vote chest a day ago. I had equipped the shield and started holding my shield, and it actually gave me enough defense to be able to withstand his attacks. He had an attack pattern. Sometimes he would attack once, sometimes he would attack twice. But my shield could block out all the damage from those attacks. So every time, there would be a little space in between where I could hit him. Now sometimes I would still get hit, but I could simply hold my shield and let my health go back up. So after a long fight, I had finally killed the sea serpent. After this, I opened up the chest and I got the sea serpent's heart as well as 300,000 gold and, you know, just a couple other little odds and ends. I completed the quest and I had officially taken out the sea monster. That's my tip for you if you want to be able to take it out. It doesn't really matter the weapon, just make sure you have a good shield. That's the most important thing. You want to have a shield with you. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I took out all three of these islands and I feel very proud. I'm excited. I really hope I can do a two to 300 days on this one, guys, because there's still more islands. There's about six more islands currently left, plus some other bonus places, I believe. So there's still so much more to do. I'm still kind of weak in the grand scheme of things, and yet I spent days playing. So I highly recommend you go check out Mind Piece. And if you want to see a 200 days, please let me know in the comment section below. I spent a lot of time doing this video. I hope you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. Please tell me if you want to see a 200 days, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Fusion Timmy, signing up.